Hi, my name is Graham Smith, and I'm one of the authors that helped develop the learning approach to mathematics that is found in our textbook as well as the video you are about to experience. To learn more about our approach to learning mathematics, visit the web address that accompanies this video. Now, enjoy the video. Introduction to Variables. This video will help you write variable expressions, evaluate variable expressions, and understand the vocabulary of variable expressions. Write variable expressions. Start with some definitions. A variable is a symbol, usually a letter of the alphabet, that represents an unknown number. A variable expression is a mathematical phrase that contains at least one variable. For example, let's say we had this much soda. We have one, two, three cases of soda here, fizz soda, plus we have two more bottles on the end. And let's say we don't know how many bottles are in each of these cases. We could use a variable to represent the number of bottles in the case. And the way that we would do that is we would say right here, we would say let B represent the number of bottles in each of these cases. Now we could use a variable expression to describe the amount of soda that we have here even though we don't know how many bottles of soda are in each of these cases. And the variable expression would look like this. 3B plus 2. The 3 is because we have three cases. The B is the number of bottles. So we would take three times the number of bottles in one of these cases. That would tell us how many bottles we have all together in these three cases. Plus then we had these two bottles on the end. So we would add plus 2 on the end of that variable expression. Now let's take a look at an example that will help you understand how to describe a situation with a variable expression. Example 1. A college bookstore has five boxes of baseball caps and 12 baseball caps on display. So that's important information. Let's see here. We have five boxes of these baseball caps and there are 12 of those on display. Describe the number of baseball caps with a variable expression. Notice we're not asked to describe the number of bo boxes of baseball caps. We only describe the actual number of baseball caps this college bookstore has. So this is our unknown. We don't know how many caps are in one of these boxes. So that's what we're going to choose to be our variable. So let's say uh, let C and C for caps equal the number of caps in one box. Okay, so now that we've defined our variable, we're ready to write a variable expression. So C was the number of caps in one box. How many boxes did we have? We had five of those boxes. So I would go like this. I would take five times C. That would take care of the number of caps that are hidden away in these boxes. And then I want to add to that the 12 caps that they have out on display. So to describe this situation, we would use the variable expression 5C plus 12. Now it's time to check your understanding of writing a variable expression to describe a situation. Pause your video player and answer this guided practice question. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question 1. A college bookstore has 12 boxes of pens. So here we have 12 boxes of pens and 32 pens on the shelf. Describe the number of pens with a variable expression. Well, the thing we don't know here is how many pens are in each of these boxes. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say that let P for pens equal the number of pens in one box. Okay. Now that we've described what our variable is, now we can represent this situation with a variable expression. So we have 12 of these boxes. So the number of pens then in those boxes is going to be 12 times P plus we have these 32 pens on display so we want to add to that the 32 pens that we have on display and so this variable expression then describes the number of pens that this college bookstore has evaluate variable expressions start with a definition finding the value of a variable expression by replacing each of the variables with its given value is called evaluating a variable expression for example the variable expression 3b plus 2 that described the quantity of soda earlier in this video can be evaluated if we know that each case contains 12 bottles. 
Now let's take a look at an example evaluating that variable expression where each of those cases contains 12. So here we are at example 2. Here's our variable expression, 3b plus 2. And now we know that in each of those cases, there were 12 bottles. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute that value of 12 in for the variable b. Now we want to be really specific about this. Whenever we're substituting for a variable, the first thing that we want to do is put an open set of parentheses wherever there was a variable. So notice right next to 3 was our b. And so I want to put an open set of parentheses first before I make this substitution. Now that I have the open set of parentheses there, now I can go ahead and plug the fact that b equals 12 into our expression. So I would put 12 in here. Now I want to follow the order of operations. And it was convenient that we use parentheses here because we know now that this operation between the 3 and the 12 is multiplication. So I want to do that multiplication before I do this addition. So I would take 3 times 12. And 3 times 12 is 36. Bring down the rest of the problem. Now I do the addition. 36 plus 2 would give us 38. And so in this case, we would know that there were 38 bottles of soda in that variable expression. Now it's time to check your understanding of evaluating a variable expression. Pause your video player and answer this guided practice question. When you're done, hit play to see how you do. Question 2. Evaluate the variable expression 10 minus x when x equals negative 6. Well, the first thing we want to do is take the variable expression and replace that variable x with an open set of parentheses. So I would write this as 10 minus, put an open set of parentheses. Now I'm ready to substitute the value. And you'll notice that we had x equals negative 6. So I'm putting that negative 6 in for x. Now notice the parentheses again really help us distinguish the signs here. Because what I have now is 10 minus a negative 6. And what we do is we're going to change this to an addition problem. So when we do that, we change the subtraction to addition. This was a negative 6, so now we change it to its opposite. So it becomes a positive 6. And so to evaluate this, I'm going to add 10 plus a positive 6 to give me 16. Understand the vocabulary of variable expressions. To communicate ideas in algebra, it is important to know the vocabulary. Each of the following example and guided practice pairs will help you learn and use the vocabulary for this chapter. Let's take a look at a definition. A term can be a number, a variable, or a product of a number and one or more variables. Terms are also separated by addition and subtraction. Now let's take a look at an example that will help you understand how to identify the terms in an expression. So example three, we have we're asked to identify the terms. Now the expression is the whole thing that's listed here, 3x minus 4y minus 7. And so what we want to do with this expression is identify the terms. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to separate the terms with a line. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and separate each of these terms with a line. So it makes it easy to see what the terms are. Okay. Now that I've got each of them separated with a line, and notice as I did that separation, I included the sign in front of them, so I made sure that that 4y contained the negative sign in front of it. And also here with that 7, I made sure that that contained the negative 7, the negative sign in front of that. Okay, now let's answer these questions. How many terms are there? There are three terms. And we want to list these terms. So the first term was 3x. And since it was positive, I don't need to put a sign in front of that. The next term was negative 4y. So I want to make sure I put the negative sign in front of that. And the last term was negative 7. Now it's time to check your understanding of finding the terms or identifying the terms in an expression. Pause your video player and answer this guided practice question. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question 3. Identify the terms in this expression. So again, this is our whole expression here. And in that expression we have 5z minus 2y minus 3 plus z. First thing we want to do is separate these terms with a line. So I would draw a line around each of these terms. Okay, And in this case, we have four terms. And if we list the terms, 5z, it's positive, so we don't need a sign in front of it. The next term is negative, so we want to have a negative 2y. The next term is also negative, so we want to list that as negative 3. The last term is positive, so we don't need to put a sign in front of that. That term will just be z. Take a look at a couple more definitions. 
There are two types of terms, constant terms and variable terms. Any term without a variable is a constant term. Any term with a variable is a variable term. Now let's take a look at an example that will help you understand how to identify the variable and constant terms in an expression. Example 4. Identify the variable and constant terms. So just like we started before, we're going to want to separate each of these terms with a line. So I would start here. I would include the positive sign on that 7, and then include the negative on that 2y, and then include the negative on the 8. So now that I have my terms separated, I can figure out which ones are constant terms and which ones are variable terms. We'll start with the constant terms. Well, the constant terms are the ones that don't have any variables at all. And if they don't have a variable, it means they're never going to change. So this first constant term that we have there is 7. The next constant term is negative 8. Taking a look at the variable terms now, those are the ones that have a variable with them. The first variable term is 2x. The second variable term is negative 2y. And again, you can see why we call these variable and constant terms. I can put different values in for x and y here so these terms can vary. Over here, these terms are never going to vary because they don't have any variables in there, so they're going to remain constant. Now it's time to check your understanding of identifying the constant and variable terms in an expression. Pause your video player and answer this guided practice question. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question 4. Identify the variable and constant terms. Again, we're going to want to start by separating our terms with a line. Okay, so we've separated our terms out. Now, which of these are constant terms? Those are going to be the ones that don't change. So negative 3 was a constant term, making sure we include the negative sign on that. And positive 15 was a constant term. The variable terms, we have 2y and also negative x. Let's take a look at some more definitions. Variable terms have two parts. They have the coefficient, and they also have the variable part. Notice the coefficient also includes the sign on that term. Constant terms have only one part. They just have a coefficient. And again, we include the sign on the coefficient. The coefficient includes the positive or negative sign written in front of the term. The variable part of the term consists of the variables and their exponents. So if we look up here at the variable part of our variable term, we would include both the x and the y and also this exponent of 2 that is on the x term. Now let's take a look at an example that will help you identify the coefficients and variable parts of terms. Example 5. We want to separate these terms with a line. So we'll start by getting our terms separated and identified. All right. So our terms are 3x squared, negative xy, and negative 7. The coefficients on those terms. Every term has a coefficient. So the number part of that first term, 3x squared, is just 3. This next one, this negative xy, might be hard to see, but anytime we don't have a number there, it's understood that there is a 1 here on this term. And so my coefficient there is going to be negative 1. Uh, the last term, my coefficient is just negative 7. Now let's take a look. The variable parts of my terms, the first term, 3x squared, the variable part is x squared. My next term, the variable part, is xy. And the last one was a constant term, so it doesn't have a variable part. Now it's time to check your understanding of identifying the coefficients and variable parts of terms. Pause your video player and answer this guided practice question. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question 5. Identify the coefficients and variable parts of these terms. So the first thing we're going to do is separate the terms with a line. Now that we have them separated, let's identify them. The terms, the first term we have is negative y squared. The next term is 5xy. And the last term is negative 3. Let's take a look at the coefficients. That first term, since we don't have a number there, it's understood that there is a 1 in front of that y. So our coefficient there would be negative 1. The next term, the coefficient is 5. And the last term, the coefficient is negative 3. Now let's look for the variable parts. In our first term, the variable part is both the y and the exponent. So we want to list that as yx squared. 
In the next term, 5xy, the variable part is the xy. The last term is a constant term, so it doesn't have a variable part. Let's take a look at another definition. Like terms have identical variable parts. Identical variable parts have the same variables with exactly the same exponents on those variables. Let's take a look at an example that will help you identify the like terms in an expression. So we have this very big expression here and the first thing we're going to want to do is identify the different terms. So we're going to want to separate each of these terms with a line. Remember to include the sign in front of the term when we're going and drawing our lines here. Okay, I've got all the terms separated out now. Now I'm looking for like terms. In order for terms to be like terms, they have to have exactly the same variable parts. Well, the first pair of like terms that I see here are these x terms. They both have exactly the same variables, and those variables are to exactly the same exponents. So I have negative 4x and 2x. That's a pair of like terms. Let's see. Uh, the other pair of like terms that I have there are the constant terms. Since they don't have a variable part at all, those terms are like terms. The variable parts match. So I would say a positive 3 and a negative 4. Now let's see, my unlike terms in that expression, 2x squared y is an unlike term. There's no other terms that had matching variable parts with that. And the other unlike term that I had in there was x squared. Now it's time to check your understanding of identifying like terms in an expression. Pause your video player and answer this guided practice question. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Question 6. Identify all the like terms. Well, let's separate all these terms out with a line. So we will go through making sure to include the sign in front of each term draw my lines there. Now for like terms we're looking for terms that have exactly the same variable parts and I see right here this has an xy variable part this also has an xy variable part. So 5xy and negative 3xy that's a pair of like terms. Uh, I also have a pair of constant terms. The positive 2 and the negative 7 are like terms. Are unlike terms in this expression? Negative xy squared is an unlike term. There aren't any other terms with exactly the same variable parts as that. And also 2x. We didn't have any other terms that, that had just an x variable on them. Now it's time to check your understanding about the vocabulary we use to describe the parts of variable expressions. Pause your video player and answer this guided practice question. When you're done, Hit play to see how you did. Question 7. Answer each question about the terms in an expression. The first thing we're asked to do is identify the number of terms in our expression. Well, to do that, first let's separate the terms out. So we draw a line around our terms. Now that I've got my lines drawn around there, it's easy to see that there are four terms. List any constant terms. Well, a constant term can't have any variable part on it at all. And our constant term that we have there is just 13. List any variable terms. Well, any term that's a variable term is going to have a variable in it. So we have negative 5x, and we would want to make sure we include the negative sign on that. We have negative x squared, and we also have negative 4x as our variable terms. Now we want to list any coefficients. Now every term has a coefficient. So since we have four terms, we should have four coefficients here. So in the first term, negative 5x, the coefficient was just negative 5. The second term was 13, so the coefficient is 13. The next term is a little tricky, but remember when there's no number in front of a term, it's understood there's a 1 there. So that coefficient is negative 1. And the last term, the coefficient is negative 4. List any sets of like terms. Well, like terms have to have matching variable parts, and there are only two that have matching variable parts. Both of my x terms are like terms. So I have negative 5x and negative 4x as the only pair of like terms in that expression. If you found this video helpful, I encourage you to check out our other videos that we have on YouTube or visit the web address that accompanies this video 
to learn more about our approach to learning mathematics.